Okay, folks, so I'm going to show you the process to getting Final Fantasy VII on PC, patched and ready for accepting mods and what have you. But a brief note, first of all, because I know this process has put a few people off in times past due to its apparent overcomplicated nature. But I tell you, the mod authors have been working so hard behind the scenes these last few months that the process now for us, as the point of view of the users, it's just such, it's so simplified now. It's going to be so easy that there's a few files we need to move around, but the bulk of the work is all going to be done behind the scenes by the software itself. And we're just going to have nice, uh, friendly looking interfaces that we can make setting adjustments to. So yeah, if you've not quite had the confidence to do this before, then this is the perfect opportunity. Now, perhaps you're not that interested in downloading all of the latest mods, the graphical updates, the various gameplay change mods, and all of that good stuff. I still actually recommend you go through this basic process because Final Fantasy VII is an old game now and you know there are issues with it, there are compatibility issues with Windows 10, there are issues with the cinematic cutscenes if you try and minimise out of them and then uh, minimise out of the game and then try and load it back up while they're playing you can get all sorts of problems, um, controller problems, you know one of the big things about Steam is that a lot of PC players like to plug their Xbox controller in and you know have a way at it but it doesn't really work very well with Final Fantasy 7 there are all manner of issues with the Xbox controller now once we've gone ahead and patched the game all of those should be fixed automatically so then we can play and we should have no compatibility we should have no problems with controllers things of that nature even without touching mods so yeah even if you don't care about that side of things I still recommend the basic process now, you can do this on the Steam version, the 2012 Square release version, or the original 1998 PC release of Final Fantasy VII. But I'm going to be focusing on the Steam version. I do own the other versions, so if you want to see the process with those versions, then let me know. Maybe I can make a future video. So, the first thing we're going to need, of course, is a fresh install of Final Fantasy VII here. Again, I'm using the Steam version. Now, in times past, I don't know if this still applies, but in times past... Modding Final Fantasy VII never really works if the game was installed in a Program Files folder. So like the Program Files or Program Files 86 that Windows creates. So what I've gone ahead and done, just to be on the safe side, I don't know if this is still applicable, is just made sure that I've created a second Steam folder that is outside of the Program Files folder. And that's where I've plonked Final Fantasy VII. So in my case, it's on the hard drive and then the usual Steam folders, but not in a Program Files folder. So there we have a nice fresh install of Final Fantasy VII. I've already re-imported my save files over and we should be good to go. Now, before patching the game itself, the first thing we need to do is make sure we have opened it. Now, if you've already been playing Final Fantasy VII, then you won't need to do this step. But if you've just got a fresh install as I have, then this is important because it just makes sure that after opening it for the first time that various files are moved into their correct locations automatically. Various game files, that is. And then once we've gone ahead and done that, got to this title screen, we can close and we're pretty much good to go. Now, just before we actually start downloading anything, I want to point out, disclaimer alert, that I am not involved in the creation of any of these mods in any way, shape or form. So all credit goes to their original creators. And of course, we are very grateful to these guys. So I just want to make sure you guys know that I don't have any credit whatsoever in the creation of these. I'm just a user like you that very much enjoys playing about with things. Right, so there's a couple of things we need, but don't get stressed when you see this screen, all these different file names and that, because we're not actually going to be using this. Now, we're going to be using a mod manager called Seventh Heaven, which some of you are probably familiar with already. But in order to use Seventh Heaven, we need to use an alternative driver for the game, because the original game driver won't be compatible. Now, the game driver we're going to be using is a newly released game driver, just a few weeks old now, called FFNX. And FFNX is going to be the driver that allows us to pretty much get the game fully compatible with Windows 10, get all this controller support and all of that good stuff. It also allows other improvements as well, like using various uh, DirectX technologies. And there's a whole list of stuff here that this will do. And importantly, it will actually allow us to make the game compatible for modding. But even if you don't want to do the modding, you're still going to need this uh, just for all those other good reasons. Now, if you know for a fact you're not really going to care about modding, then you can just go ahead and get this set up using the instructions, and that's fine. But what I'm going to do is use the 7th Heaven 2.2 method. We're going to download the mod manager, 
and that will patch it for us using those files automatically and then we don't have to use mods still if we don't want to but if we do or if we think we might do in the future with 7th heaven installed we have the option to do that if we go the other route of just downloading the driver and setting that up then yeah we can install 7th heaven later but i prefer to just get it done now so it's all ready to go so I will leave a link to this particular thread down in the video description so that you can get the download link. And 7th Heaven is a very popular mod manager for Final Fantasy VII and it was recently updated towards the start of this year to version 2.0 and that takes a lot of the hard work out from the user's point of view in getting things set up. Uh, but it's recently been updated again to a beta version 2.2 and yes, I do say beta, not beta, I'm not American. <laughs> okay, so 2.2 and this is a beta version but... This is the version we are going to want to use so what we're going to do is go ahead and download 7th heaven 2.2 beta here so it looks like the download links working which is nice and with the file downloaded we just need to obviously run that i'm sure you guys know how to install things sorry for the black screen there that's just because for some reason windows doesn't allow you to record the uh, little panel that pops up saying that you need an administrator to confirm the installation right so let's go ahead next accept next next uh yep yeah, i'm going to install this into just the c drive into my hard drive again try and keep all of this stuff out of program files folders uh next next and create a desktop shortcut there we go nice and easy yeah all agreed all with me so far and we can go ahead and launch the program immediately here oh it's gone over onto the monitor let me just try and bring that across uh okay well First of all, we're going to be greeted by the general settings screen. Now, sorry, the actual main program is opened on the other monitor so you guys can't see it, but that's not relevant for now. Uh, the first thing we need to make sure is that the game has detected, or sorry, the program has detected all of the locations for our Final Fantasy VII folders. Now, the thing is, as long as you haven't done anything like got multiple installations of the game set up, it's going to do this automatically for you. Like I say, everything's pretty much taken care of automatically here. It's so simple. So you can go ahead and check these folders if you want to, but I already know in my case they're absolutely right. So I haven't set these, the program's done it all by itself. And all I'm going to do is just untick these first two options here. We could even untick the third, but that doesn't really matter. And that just gives us a little bit more control, which is what I prefer, but if you want to make life easier, you can keep these on. And then we can click save. There we go, I'll bring it over now. And you know guys, we are good to go. We can play the game now and that new driver is installed. All of those compatibility issues with the original game and Windows 10 and the cinematics and all of that stuff is fixed. Well, it should be. But let's go ahead and just run through a few additional things that are worth making note of. So if you want to bring up that previous menu where you select your game file folders, then that's from settings from the mod manager and general settings take you straight to it. And a couple of other things, if we go to settings, then controls. So I mentioned that with the new driver installed, uh, we're going to have native Xbox controller support. And I've got the Xbox controller plugged in. You can see the default button mapping here. I don't even have to do anything, but I can do. And what I've done is just gone ahead and changed the A and B buttons around. Just because I personally, in, when playing Final Fantasy VII, like the confirm button to be the bottom button on the controller. And the cancel button to be the one on the right there so i swapped those around uh, you can also enable uh, ps4 controller support by turning this toggle to on it will just request that you download a small driver file and then it will set that up for you in a very similar way to the xbox controller so a nice bit of functionality there and the other thing that i need to point out to you is if you go to settings and game driver then you can make changes to your graphics interface so this is again using the driver settings we just installed so graphics api uh, you can use OpenGL or directx 11. most people would probably say directx 11 is the safest option OpenGL though is perfectly acceptable now there are a couple of other uh, graphics apis that are supported by this driver we've installed but they are a little bit more experimental so they're not actually available from this menu here but i think you can make adjustments if you want to use those others such as directx 12 from the various config files but that's going beyond the scope of this particular tutorial right resolution we'll keep that as auto and for the purposes of the video i'm going to change this to windowed mode uh, just because it's easy to record and stuff whilst also recording my desktop and we have the uh, option to change the aspect ratio 
from the native. Of course, Final Fantasy VII is from the 90s, so we get that nice square display. But if we want to, we can choose to stretch the whole image across the screen. I don't like that, so I'm going to stick to the native look. We can turn on anti-aliasing if we wish to do so, right up to 16 times if your graphics card supports it. But let's just go ahead and select 8 for now. And then we can turn on some other filtering options if we wish to do so. And there are some various advanced options, but for now I'm just going to keep all of those on their default settings. And then we're going to select save. How easy was that guys? Hey, could that have been any easier? We've got a new patch or driver installed which effectively patches the game for us. We haven't installed any mods yet. Um, you don't even need to if you don't want to. But that whole process is now set up and complete. So if you want to in the future or if you want to now, you can do so. But before fiddling about with mods, I do recommend selecting play at least once just to make sure that the game is still working. So if there was a problem, you know it's not with any mods you've downloaded because you haven't downloaded any yet. Select, select play. And then we'll just go through the loading there. We'll maximize that because I've got it in window mode. You know, I can play the game now. It's as simple as that. And I'm doing so with my Xbox controller. And one of the good things as well is that with this driver, the D-pad on the Xbox actually works. So if you play Final Fantasy VII without going through this process, on your Xbox controller, not only will you have to remap all the buttons because they're all in higgledy-piggledy order, but you cannot get the D-pad to work at all. You have to use the analog stick, which is really annoying uh, for many of us. So yeah, you know, it's as simple as that. We are playing the game fully patched, perfectly. Brilliant. Uh, one thing to show you as well then, because one of the issues that's been fixed is the ability to interrupt cutscenes. So if we just load up a game here, and then start a new game. This is something that bugged a lot of people. Uh, we've got a nice opening cinematic cutscene here that is playing in the background. We can go ahead and do anything we want now on our computer while that's playing. And when we come back to the game, it's running absolutely perfectly. Previously on the original version that hasn't been patched, trying to minimize out of cutscenes and movies and that in this game it's just a it's just a recipe for disaster it really is the game either crashes the music stops playing when you come back um it goes you know either in slow motion it's just so many different problems arise that all of those have been fixed and it's it's just really smooth now it's really really good couple of bits just before we finish first of all you may note that with the new driver installed the game itself is centralized to its window, so if you played your original installation of Final Fantasy VII, you may remember the entire game is kind of shifted up so that you have a big black bar across the bottom of the screen. Well, it's now been shifted down a little bit so that you have an evenly distributed uh, black bar at the bottom and then one at the top. So it's more centralized, nice little quality of life change. Uh, but one thing now, this is purely optional, okay? Even though we've got controller support now, the Xbox controller or PS4 controller if you downloaded that extra file, you'll note that the in-game prompts are still reading their old prompts, their old display. So if we speak to Jessie, for example, here, rather than saying push B or whatever it is, she's still saying push OK, uh, which is fine if you know what those all relate to. But it would be nice if we could get the actual controllers mapped into those text boxes. So if we go to the config, for example, you can see on joystick, rather than having the actual images of the buttons, it's just labelled as it normally is. So, I mean, that's just how Final Fantasy VII works. It always has done for the PC version. But we can do something about that if you want to. Again, completely optional. Your controllers will still work absolutely fine now. But if you just want to make those display changes, I'm going to show you how to do that using a couple of mods. So let's go ahead and close the game here. Then if we go over to Browse Catalog, and by the way, this isn't an, isn't an exhaustive list of mods in the catalog here. These are just mods that have been implemented into 7th Heaven. But 7th Heaven can also use other mods that you download from other sources. Outside of the catalog here, it can still make use of those. So if there's a mod that you want to use, check if it's got 7th Heaven compatibility. So even if it's not in this list, you can still use it. But the two we're going to be interested in for today are the ESUI controller add-on and this one here, the enhanced stock UI. Now, I don't know if there is a controller mod, uh, as in like for the displays of the buttons, that uses the default Final Fantasy VII 
UI. I just don't know. Maybe there is. If there is, let me know in the comment section. But built straight into 7th Heaven, this is the easiest way I know how to do this. It does mean changing the default UI to a slightly more flashy modern version. So let's go ahead and download, uh, where is it? Yeah, enhanced stock UI as well. Just double click them and these mods will download. And once they've done that, they'll go over to the My Mods tab. So we'll just wait for this one. Nearly there. Yes, you get to see the awesome internet that I have. 30 megabyte download speed. Woo. Okay. Uh, and all we're going to do is turn both of these on. There we go. Just like that. And we can leave all the other settings to do the default if we want to. So let's go ahead and select play now. And then make our way into the game once more. Usually once you've installed a new mod, it may take just an extra couple of seconds to load the game up for the first time since doing so. Uh, we get to see that new interface there. And you can make changes to this interface if you want to from the mod settings, but I'm not going to for today. There we have it. So if we go to config now, you can see that the joystick commands have all been replaced with the actual images, icons of the Xbox controller. And again, if you were using the PS4 controller, then they would be representative in those icons there, the buttons from the PS4 controllers. Let's go and see if Jessie has updated her OK command to the Xboxer control. And of course, there are various times throughout Final Fantasy VII where you need to input commands and stuff in specific time frames that, you know, it does help if you can actually see on screen the correct buttons you need to press rather than button one and button two and OK and cancel and switch and all of that stuff. Uh, it can get confusing. There we have it, look. Yep, so updates in the dialogue boxes as well. So a couple of little optional mods there if you want to get that little display uh, for uh, controller icons in place. But again, you don't have to. It's entirely up to you. There we have it then, folks. So thank you once again to all of the authors of all of these mods. And I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. And let me know in the comment section if you decide to go ahead and install this new driver along with 7th Heaven 2.2. But yeah, take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe as well because I do plan to do more mod videos in the near future. Maybe we can build on what we've done here today as well, going to a little bit more of the complexities behind the system and some other mods as well. But yeah, take care, everyone. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.